to drones or gigs back with another t3 video and this one is actually going to be a really really important one uh, you can see i've got my little icon here so we're going to kind of keep that out of the way so we can focus on the heroes and all that kind of stuff this video is on composition saw a lot of people asking about it um i even got onto one of atomics videos that i was watching and there were a bunch of comments saying oh can you guys talk about composition and hero switching and all that kind of stuff so i decided i'm gonna go ahead and do a video on it for you guys so that we can educate all the players of t3 and you guys know i've got the guides and now this is going to also be in the guide section for that playlist and if you guys want to talk about um some of those comments and see what i'm kind of referring to i actually posted that so that'll be on like the post around 1 a.m. or something like that actually has those screenshots. If you're curious, like, oh, is that actually something people are talking about? It is. It's something a lot of people are really kind of worried about. They want to know more about it, especially with how prevalent ranked has been lately. So obviously, first thing we're going to get right off the bat is team composition. What does that even mean, right? So what that means is that is the combination of, of heroes that you have on the battlefield at any given time and for 5v5 ranked it's obviously it's going to be five is your team comp and five is the other team comp and it just depends what heroes you have on the field in that game and during that game and that's your composition right it's that combination of heroes and because each hero has their own special role obviously that's going to play a big part in what you guys want to run or what you want to play, how you're going to kind of set up your team. And obviously a lot of you guys are solo players, right? So we will kind of touch on that. This one's kind of going to just be um, no gameplay, literally just the list of heroes that I have right here. We're going to explain everything for you. And then we'll do a second video more on the topic of switching. Um, and then the first thing that I want to say, right, obviously you guys are like, well, why can't I just, play whoever I want. That is totally fine. And you'll see in a lot of videos that some people might run a good team comp and the other team doesn't. And that team still wins, even though their team comp's not as good. And that is because they have a heavy damage comp, right? Their composition for their team is focused on killing the opponent faster than, than they can kill you. And most of those games are a high skilled team versus a low skilled team and the high skilled team just they all pick damage dealers and they just kill really fast and it doesn't matter and realistically what that means is the team is good enough that they don't have to worry about team composition you've seen a lot of atomics videos a lot of my videos you'll see that happen where the other team is just simply better or you'll have somebody that actually just carries the team they get like 25 to 30 kills and it's it's their fault for either carrying the team or letting the team down. And you'll see a lot of that. So composition is something that's really important, especially because if you have a perfectly symmetrical team comp, then you're actually going to see the higher skilled team come out on top. As long as they have, if they have the same heroes across the board and it's a good team comp, then they'll, you know, the higher skilled team is going to win. Um, I do want to talk about the Vanguard, right? So one of the most important heroes to have on your team is the Vanguard hero, right? I'd say you're probably going to see a Jabali most of the time, uh, but the Vanguard hero is the backbone of the team, and there's actually two types. If you guys didn't know, the two types of Vanguards are Brawl and Dive, right? And so Brawl Vanguards like Jabali, their main, you know, shtick right what they're known for what they're brawling for is taking damage soaking up that damage and basically trying to be a sponge for all the damage dealers on the enemy team and hold that point right you want to put your vanguard on the point and that's where they stay that is where all of the um the high games where you just push the payload real fast or the control games where you keep the payload the you keep the point the whole time, right? And you kind of sit there and it's 100 to like 0, 100 to 30, something like that. And it's usually because you have a really good brawl vanguard sitting on that point or on that payload, just covering it and keeping it, right? 
Then your dive vanguards, which we will talk about here, are actually going to be Fade, right? Fade is a very good dive vanguard. I'd say he's probably the better of the dive vanguards. But um, your dive vanguards are going to be him and Victor. Uh, we're not really going to talk about Ono because he doesn't really have a place in the meta just yet. Um, that would be your dive vanguards, just those two. And then um, Kelvin's not very good. We'll just put him here just for the sake of it. And then Victor's going to be your dive vanguard with Fort, Ruby, and Jabali as the brawl vanguards i'd say kelvin kind of would be in there but he he just kind of sucks right now he needs some love from the devs so your dive vanguards are going to be primarily focused on taking out the brawl vanguards they basically they dive into the action um i mean both of them have a dash right uh fade has his his rush and then victor has two dashes that both do damage so that's where you're going to find that dive word that's where it comes from that definition is because they literally dive into the action your focus is to go in deal a bunch of damage and hopefully take out the enemy tank and then swing those 1v1s with the damage dealers and stuff like that you want to kind of swing the match right dive in and change the the pace of the game that is what your dive vanguards are for right one of the things i'll say right is the composition should be two tank roles most of the time right you see right here we've got team one and team two they have two vanguards one in each role and honestly that's probably the best way to do it unless you have a damage dealer who's really good and you know they're super crazy then you can kind of afford to take a dive vanguard off um, and just run a brawl vanguard and run a healer right and so that's really like which roles are you going to pick in your team comp which roles should you switch to? Should you focus on? When you start the game, you want to see what they have and compare it to what you have. And oftentimes, people will see the comps, and this is pretty realistic. Most of the time, this is what you're going to see. You'll see two vanguards and a neon. Neon is the best healer, right? So you can definitely you know, pull her down and, and bring Labula in there. He's, he's really good. We'll use the the regular labula because I've got some some duplicates in here so it's easier to just have some that uh, show the same icon because you'll usually see a Jabali on each team in those higher ranks um, and then obviously uh, that healer is very very important that's who keeps your vanguards alive and um, two vanguards right you have two vanguards on that team team one and then you have team two let's say your team comp is like that right team one is always going to lose unless they focus the healer and they're able to take them off. You know, uh, healer and Vanguard like that, healer comp is always going to win because he's just going to be able to keep the Jabali alive while the other one gets the Jabali. So a lot of time, that's what you'll see. You'll either see the two tank and a healer or tank and healer. Those are the best team comps. That is the backbone of the team composition right there. You want to have a tank for the point, and you want to have a healer to keep that tank alive, right? So you definitely want one of those, and I would say you have one of each role, right? So you have your Vanguard, your healer, and then really right now what you'll see is you're going to see damage dealers, almost always Gloria. Uh, you know, maybe we'll throw in a Gatlin there. So you'll see one of each role. That's pretty much the ideal team comp, right? is you have your your tank, your healer, your damage dealer, and your uh, your flanker. And usually the best team comp would be for another tank just because of the defensive power to hold the point or push the point or defend against the payload, you know, um, stop it and make sure that they can't push it. That's what you're really going to see. This is the ideal team comp. It has one of every role. And then it also maybe has that second tank to kind of give it a stronger foundation and really keep all of your people together. All your players need to be together, and then your flank is on their own. Uh, oftentimes what you'll see is you'll actually see something like this. You'll have a sniper hero, somebody who can do insane damage and pick off those stranglers. So what you'll see is 
The Osas will be waiting for the Jabali or the Fade to not have a shield, or he'll focus on the Neon. And that high damage, that high burst of damage that kills off one person is almost always enough to start swinging the momentum. And what you'll see with the payload and with the control point is once you kill their Vanguard, that's it. That's pretty much you're going to get that point. You're going to push the payload. You're going to stop the payload. Whatever it may be, most of the time, you're going to see that work. Take out the tank. Take out the healer. Um, as far as like who you go for first, you always go healer and then tank. And then depending on you know who's the best on the team or who's giving you the most trouble, you might go after. You might go after the Osas if you're the shell, something like that. And I think that these team comps are going to be the best. Um, this is what you see in all of the very high-level games. And the only time you'll really see anybody switch off of this is if they get just hardcore carried by like Agoria and Team 1 has to switch off. Or what you might see is it's like the last leg of Payload Escort. You're right there. You're trying to hold them. And, you know, Team 2's got their team comp. And you have to switch to like triple tank or something in order to stop them from pushing the payload. So for the most part, this is what you're going to see as a good team composition in your ranked games. Um, and that's what you're kind of striving for. You always want to have, at the very least, right, you always want to have that Vanguard and that healer and then a good damage dealer. So these three are the backbone, and then these this tank and this flanker just make it stronger and make it harder for them to break through your front line, right? Um, obviously, dive vanguards are the counters to the brawl vanguards. So I always recommend you run run one of each until you see the composition the enemy team has, right? So let's say they don't actually have a Jabali, they have a Diggy, right? You're good. You don't need to run the Fade. You can run a Damage Dealer because they don't have a brawl vanguard for Fade to counter. And ironically... Jabali is actually the counter um, to, or Fade is the counter to Jabali, I should say. Fade has his charge that can go through the shield. You rush him, do some damage, and all you need is like a few shots from one of your damage dealers, either while you're rushing or when you hit that wall, and that Jabali's dead. So you really have to pay attention to what the enemy team has and make sure that you have at least um, one of those three, Vanguard, Healer, damage and then pay attention to what the enemy has so that you can actually focus on who you need to focus on so another thing i wanted to talk about right i mentioned kind of at the beginning of this video that you have the the heavy damage compositions right and so you kind of have two basic compositions you have the tank focus and the damage focus now it does kind of depend on the mode um a lot of control matches you'll see a good amount of people will just run two or three tanks or two tanks. And those vanguards are really going to help to keep the point. And you also might see a damage focus where instead of running that one, right, instead of running a fade, you go damage. And then maybe you have a Hua Ling in there, right? So you got one tank, a healer, and three damage dealers. And so the focus isn't necessarily on doing damage to the enemy tank that they have right here. Your goal is all three of these damage dealers are going to kill off the enemy team and the tanks face each other and the Neon helps because she swings it and makes the Team 1 Jabali win against the Team 2 Jabali. So you'll see that you kind of have games where the enemy team has a damage focus comp or a tank focus comp and it really always depends on the mode and what role you're serving, like if you're defending or attacking for the payload and uh, what you want to do with the control point. Because if your Jabali is really good, you don't need a secondary tank. You might not even need a healer. You might be like, oh, you know, Jab our Jabali is so good that he's completely countering it. And it, does it doesn't matter who the fifth one is. So you do have the opportunity to carry the team depending on who you pick and who you play and how good you are and stuff like that. It, it's kind of... It's a trade-off of uses, right? Whether you want to focus on tank or damage. And it's how those choices affect the team composition. So if I am playing Gatlin and my friend here is playing Gloria and we get zero kills, 
then it doesn't do us any good to to pick a damage dealer. The damage is not going to be enough to swing any of the 1v1 situations or the group fights or anything like that because we're not using our picks to the best potential. And that's how your your picks can affect the team composition. So you really need to play the role that you pick and you really need to help your team out. And that goes for that goes for everybody. So if you have a neon, right? You're solo queuing, you're playing Hua Ling, right? You're doing really good, getting like 10 kills a match, but your neon's just, you know, she's sitting back with the Gatlin and not healing the Jabali, then there's no reason to pick a healer. And if the Jabali, he just runs out in the open, he's not holding up his shield, then, you know, maybe instead of picking Neon, you go down here and you're like, oh, well, we need to hold the point. I'll pick Fort and Fort plus not very good Jabali equals somewhat good of a tank, something like that. So it really kind of depends on what you want to use the team composition for and what your goal is. If you really just want to play you know, you love Hua Ling, so you're going to play Hua Ling no matter what, then that's kind of what you do. I wouldn't recommend it in ranked. I think that if we as a community, we learn, oh, I want to play Hua Ling, but the team needs a, a tank, then by all means, play a tank, play a, a Hua Ling. It, it's all about what is most important for the team in ranked. And so that's why you see, you'll see the meta, right? So what the meta is, is usually i would say this is the meta right here where's my there you go there's osas team one is a meta team you know the the gatlin's kind of debatable uh you can kind of switch her out there we can easily switch out her with a flanker i would say probably shell or aletta i think that's always going to be uh, a good team comp where is aletta here there she is. All right. Team one is a very good comp. They're meta, right? That means that these are the heroes everybody is playing. They're the heroes that do the best. They're the heroes that are the best in their respective role. And they're the heroes that give you the best team comp. This is a meta team comp. This is what you'll see all of the very high teams running. You'll see all of these players are cracked at doing what they do. Cracked Jabali. Cracked Aletta. This Osas is getting headshots. No body shots the whole game. That's what meta means. That is the the icing on the cake, the star on top of the tree. That is what meta means. That is the heroes that are the most important. They're the best heroes, and they are what everybody plays. That's what you'll see the pros play, and you'll go into a, a match of gold. And if you get a team that's playing together or has some semblance of being good, which I mean, let's face it, you don't even see that in some of the lower diamond ranks, actually. But if you get a good team, that's the meta team comp. Team one right here, this is the staple. This is what you'll see. This is what's recommended. This is what all the pros use. This is what all the streamers say. Oh, we don't have a Vanguard. I'm going to pick Jabali. You know what I mean? That's meta. And why is that important? Well, because these heroes are always going to be the ones that kind of outperform the rest or they give a utility a use that none of the other heroes have none of these other heroes can soak up damage the way jabali does for his shield is only in one spot it's very easy to pass through and ruby she may have three but they move and they're also um have less health than the singular jabali shield so that's why he's meta because his use as a vanguard is exactly what you need and it is better than all of the other vanguards for that particular use. So that's kind of why certain heroes are meta and why they tend to be picked more often than others. And that's why when you look at a team comp, this is the team comp right here. You have your healer, your damage dealer, your vanguard, your sniper usually, or your Aletta to deal with them. And so that's where these roles come in. So the Aletta's job, right? Let's say we have these same team comps. You got your healer, you got another Jabali, and maybe you run a shell and a, let's say a Judix is your sniper, right? So the Aletta, her job is to take out the Judix or the Gloria, whoever is in the back. And if nobody's in the back, she wants to harass this healer right here, this Labula. She wants to harass him, try to get him off of the Vanguard to, or yeah, 
try to get the healer off of the Vanguard so that they can take out not only the Vanguard, but the majority of the team. The Osas, you're going to see him in the back. He's going to be taking shots, trying to one-shot literally anybody on the enemy team. And same for the Judix, that's her job. You want to have those snipers deal that crazy, insane entry damage so they kill off one person and they make this a 4v5 because they killed the Judix or the Shell or something like that. The damage dealer, their job is to break the shield of the tank or take out anybody they can, say... The Glory is sitting here, and she's in the back, and the shell comes around. The Gloria takes the shell out, and then it's a 4v5 until the, sh the shell spawns back in. So main goal is to break the shield of the Vanguard, and if that's not doable, um, you know, maybe you pick Christina, and the Jabali just always has a shield up, and you miss. You know, that's kind of how it is. The support, the main focus is going to be healing the Vanguard. That's what your support needs to do. They just want to heal the Vanguard and maybe dish out a little bit of damage. And then if you see maybe the, the Jabali's full health, he has a full shield, nobody's on him right now, and the Gloria just took a, a body shot from the Judix, then maybe you teleport to her. And that's why Neon is so good, because she can teleport. Um, obviously, we talked about the role of the tank, the Vanguard. The reason they want to be on the front lines is to keep those points or push those payloads and stuff like that. So... The next video we're going to do is kind of going to be focusing on switching. We'll definitely be talking about that. But what you're going to see is you're going to say, well, why are you making this video when, you know, even in your games, right? Platinum 1, almost Diamond 4, uh, Atomics and Diamond 3, I think, at the moment. Um, why are you making this video if nobody chooses this? Well, we need to get this out there. A lot of people are asking What's a good team comp? What do I do? How do I, how do I decide to switch? All that kind of stuff. And that's what this video is for. It's to educate the T3 player base so that they know what they want to do, what they're trying to do, so that you can get more team comps like this in pubs matches and especially in ranked. If you go into a pub match, right, you're going to see none of this. Uh, you're, you're honestly not going to see any of this unless they're all playing together and they're practicing or something like that for a ranked match. Um, you're not going to see any of this in pubs. And that brings it back around to the main focus of T3 Arena, and that's just to have fun. If you don't want to play Jabali, you don't play Jabali. If you don't want to play Neon, you don't play Neon. So you'll see, you'll see comps like this, and that's why their comps bad. This guy wants to play Mark. This guy has a challenge with Gloria. This guy thinks he's cracked with Osos like me, but he's not. Like me, he actually hits like one headshot per game. You're going to see that because in pubs, most people just want to have fun. You take it to ranked, you know, you're in bronze or silver, and you still see this. And what happens is if your team's better than the enemy team, you can still see that damage dealer um, stomp where this Gloria goes crazy, this Osos hits a bunch of headshots, and, and the Jabali, he doesn't really do anything. So that kind of brings it back around to this bottom slot here, which I haven't really talked about. That is the skill dependent slot. What is that? You know, like, why is that even there? So what that is, is these heroes, they maybe aren't the greatest. Maybe they're cracked in the right hands, but they are skill dependent. They are maybe, you know, this Victor's a counter to the, to, to the Jabali because he can one shot him. But if you aren't good with Victor... You're not going to use him to the fullest potential, and he's not going to be good in his role. You're better off picking Shell, who is a meta pick, or Aletta, who's a meta, meta pick, than somebody like Vincent, who you have to be good with in order to kind of get that insane value. We'll kind of put Osas in the skill dependent here. It's kind of debatable whether you guys think he's skill dependent or not. We'll just put him there for now. You can move him out if you want to. Um, but most of these heroes... The only way you're going to use them and the only way they'll be valuable to the team comp is if you're insanely good with him. Ono is the best example because I was top rank, um, not number one rank, but uh, in the top 100, I think it was 68 or 70 or something like that. And I was really good with him and I found a lot of uses for him. And then I was like, oh, 
hey man, you should get Ono. And my buddy was like, oh, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to use him. Picked him up, used him for one game. He's like, this guy sucks, needs a buff. That's why these heroes are where they are. These heroes are very difficult to be good with. They're very difficult to use. And you won't really see them. But if they're a high skill player, the Cosma could be the turning point of the game. He could be in the air taking out everybody. And you could be like, why is nobody taking out the Cosma? I'm the Jabali. I'm holding up my shield and no one's stopping the Cosma and I can't get to him. Well, the Cosma is really good. And that's where his skill dependency comes in. And a lot of times, that's where team comps tend to fall apart. You have a, a Vincent who is just. He's on fire. He's in the back line. He's taking out your tanks. And what you end up having is your team comp up top with the Jabali and the healers and all that. Instead of playing like this, they're like, oh, my God, we have to switch. And so the Aletta's like, I can't get him. Neon's like, I can't get him. Jabali's like, I can't get him. And that's when you see comps with like a Gatlin and then a Skady. And you see the team comp just devolves. It turns to mush. It goes out the window, and everybody has to try to take out this skill hero who's absolutely insane. Or you'll see the same team comp like this. Somebody's playing zero Kelvin, and they suck. So these guys, all these damage dealers can be popping off, but their zero Kelvin's not pushing the payload. He's just sitting around, not using his hero to the proper role. He's not doing what he should be. And so it doesn't matter how much these guys pop off. This Jabali sits on the payload with his Labula, and those two just carry the payload, push it, and it doesn't matter because they just are able to get it, and no one even stands on the payload to stop it, and that's why you lose. Even though you have a tank, maybe he's just not very good. You know, the player who plays Yo Kelvin wasn't very good. Um, the player with Vincent isn't very good, and that's what you'll also see. That's another way that these team compositions can be kind of flipped on their head and um, it can actually go against you. If you have, you might have a great team comp, but if your skill is not there, it just doesn't matter. So that's pretty much it for the video. We'll, we'll go back to our regular team comps um, for what is good. This right here is actually a really good team comp. And then I think we'll probably go double Vanguard right here. You got to dive and then we will grab where's our neon. There we go. So these are really common team comps you're going to see. Like I said, we'll just kind of reiterate what you want. You want one uh, Vanguard heal, want one Vanguard with a healer, right? Always on the hip. You want a damage dealer. And then I would say you usually want a flanker, but you can substitute depending on how good of a damage dealer you pick or what the enemy is running. You always want damage healer vanguard right the best team comps you're going to see usually have two vanguards or two damage and usually a flanker who's pretty cracked you know uh like shell or something like that and then you'll see the alette on the enemy team those are the typical team comps you're going to see and those are the ones that are going to win you games because they have the meta heroes they have those heroes that are not only very good but are being used for a specific purpose so that's the video for you guys. Definitely let me know in the comments. If you have any other questions, jot them down and I'll respond to them. You, you guys know I'm really good with responding to comments. And drop a sub. Drop a sub because we are going to be talking about the other part of this that is switching in the next video. Probably around Monday, depending on how school goes for me. But keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes peeled. It's going to be a good one. And hopefully this was educational for you guys because... Team composition is very, very important in T3 Arena's rank scene, and hopefully you guys learned a lot. Peace out.